Hi, church family. This is Keila Bakken. Um, some of you may know me from the flute and saxophone playing. Um, I got the great honor of doing today's devotion. Um, it's on day nine of Pastor Mike Lingenfelter's book, Stepping Forward. Yes, 39 days in Ephesians. All right, we are on day nine. Our verse is Ephesians 2.10. All right, I'll read that right now. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I, I love that this is the one I got asked to do. Um, I have such, I just, I'm more of a servant with my hands. Words, not so good, so please forgive me and have grace right now. <laughs> um Pastor Mike's insight is awesome. I'm going to read read it, and then I, the Lord brought this story to me I'm going to share with you in regards to it. All right, um, we'll start at the beginning here. Not one human being will ever enter the gates of heaven by great works performed through his or her strength. This is difficult for many to accept, but it must be acknowledged. Um I agree. Of course, we think a lot of times that if we do a lot of things and, and in the name of the church, in the name of the Lord, but is it from the Lord or is it from us? Do we want to be noticed? Do we want to be recognized? Are we feeling a void that it's not Christ, um, that it's self? We have to consider those things. And often, oftentimes I am guilty and not um, aligned with the Lord in those things where it's on my own will and not his, although it might look like it is, but it affects um, other parts of our world, like our families um, and relationships. Um, we get ourselves too busy working um, good deeds that we have created ourselves. So, um, so I, I struggle with that one because um, we do not enter the gates of heaven um, by our works. And yet here we are focusing on them so much. Um, um, our good works come after salvation and not before. Um, that's really important to acknowledge. Uh, so our, that once we are saved, our works come after salvation. Those are the good works. Those are the works that are aligned with the truth, that's aligned with the Lord. They glorify him when we walk in his ways, in his guidance, in his wisdom. Um, I pray for this wisdom and guidance, uh, all the time, uh, cause oftentimes I get in the way, uh, a lot in the way and it's not as much the Lord's as it is mine. So it's really important for me, especially as I like to do things with my hands more, um, so that they are off of the Lord. My works are the Lord. Our works are the Lord. Um, so anyways, sorry, <laughs> there's this story that was brought to my mind today and uh, as I was getting ready for this devotional and really just thought, wow, what a good allegory to um, this verse today. Um, it's called Hope for the Flowers. It's an old book, um, kind of hippie-ish, but if you know me, that's my past and upbringing. Um, there's a lot of goodness there. Um, anyway, so... Uh, it's about two caterpillars. Their names are Stripe and Yellow. And Stripe and Yellow are um, eating leaves. And they see all the other caterpillars eating leaves. And they there's leaves higher and higher and higher. And they're like, they see caterpillars going up to eat the leaves higher. And they're like, this can't be all that's to, into life is eating leaves. So uh, let's see what's up there. So they keep going higher and then higher. And then everyone's climbing on each other and stepping on each other and smashing each other and just... Uh, just mistreating to get above and above and above and above. So at one point, um, Yellow was like, mm -mm, this, I, this can't be it. This can't be what's to life. And so she goes all the way back down um, and uh, makes a decision for mm -hmm. herself. And I'll, we'll get to that after we read this next part here. Um, it's it says uh, in Mr. Lingen, pa Pastor Lingenfelter's book, it says, as a new creation, a born-again believer becomes God's masterpiece, his work of art. And I wanted to read that because in the story, when um, Yellow went back down, she created a cocoon because it said in, says it's her instincts. But let's, and for our sake, let's say instincts are the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, so her instincts, she went back down, made a cocoon, and turned into a butterfly. And here, um, Pastor writes, a born-again believer becomes God's masterpiece, his art, work of art. And uh, of course, as I hope everyone agrees, is that butterfly is just a work of art. It's beautiful. It's like a painting. And uh, the Holy Spirit, I, 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 this made me think that it was like that nudging you get from the Holy Spirit when you know the Lord should, is telling you to do something or say something or whatever, but it's the Holy Spirit and you can feel it. You just know it's not, it's different. It's something, to, it's the Lord. It's he's because it's aligned with his word. You have a peace about it. However, yet yeah, our flesh still gets anxious sometimes with those things because it's our flesh. It doesn't want the Holy Spirit to guide us. It's in battle with the flesh or the flesh is in battle, I should say, with the Holy Spirit. Um, so anyway, sorry, I was excited because I thought, yes, that's that, that, it's like that book. It just reminded me, and I'm a story. I, I can learn a lot through stories. Um, so she called, she followed her instinct and became a um, butterfly. And then uh, Stripe had just continued up the, up the ladder of success, we can call it, the above the caterpillar, stomping. And he actually reached the top. And he got up there, and all he could see was other caterpillars struggling to get where he was. And it wasn't a beautiful place to be. It wasn't magnificent. It wasn't glorifying. It was it was empty. It was void. So he went back down to see where um, yellow was, the butterfly who and he saw her cocoon she left him she gave him her cocoon and he uh he became a cocoon and a, a butterfly eventually um he followed her and i mean if, if i don't know about you but for me i'm like wow that just makes sense that's that that gives me the peace of the lord when we become his workmanship what he designed for us to be and and i believe that also is in our works that we do after we are saved because we want to glorify him we want to glorify his glory because we are now part of him we are his children he is our father we are are essentially one and uh why not want to do works in his in, in his will to revere him and honor and glorify him and I'm so passionate about that because uh, I I desire the Holy Spirit to always tell me where to go and what to do and and uh, I just almost sinfully idolize that desire and, and guidance where I probably most likely create it myself and do things although they are helpful and God surely hope, uses them uses all things for this good however I know if I had prayed upon it and I had listened to the nudging and had searched his word for the the lining um with his will with his truth then i would know it was him and not myself and i don't always do that so this is a good reminder for me and, and all those who follow christ is are we doing what he wills for us what his desire and his plan it says in that in ephesians 2 10 our verse it says um he prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Um, so they're already there. They're already planned for us. So we don't have to even take the burden of planning for them. They just will be presented to us. And we need to know that's when we are to follow and do his works. And that's my prayer for you. It's my prayer for myself, my family, my children, our church family. Um, I, um, we, I do know that... Uh, when we follow his uh, his predest he's pre planned planned for our, us that are his good works after salvation, um, the fruits of the spirit become evident in our life, and that's how we know we are um, on the right track. Um, you're experiencing love, you're experiencing joy, you're experiencing steadfastness, which is a it seems tough, but it's such a character builder and good for us and good for his children. Um, the fruits become evident. Your joy in all situations becomes um, unwavering when you are walking in his path, in his will for you, in his plan, in his good works he prepared beforehand for you. Um, he will bless you. And I just know that. I know that from what he's done in my life. And I know that what I've seen in others' lives. And I know that for what he will do in your life, too. Um, 
not sure how to end this, but uh, the Lord really put on my heart this week the word revere, reverence. Um, what does it look like to revere our Father? And I looked up the word in the Webster's 1828 um, dictionary. Dalen, my husband, loves that dictionary. He says it's most aligned, in his opinion, with a more Christian interpretations because um, it was more biblical back then. Um, based, I should say. Um, Webster's 28 Dictionary says, for rev to rev or revere is to regard with fear mingled with respect and af affection. And so I'm so, I love that that word affection is in there. Um, because that tells us it's a relationship and cares. Care goes back and forth. Um, so what does it look like for us to revere our Father? To revere His workmanship in us? To revere um, his good works that he's prepared beforehand so that we can walk in them. Um, what does that look like in our lives for each one of us? I know for me, um, it's going to look different here. And I just really want to be on the Lord's um, will and not my own. And that's my prayer. And I, that's my prayer for you. And I thank you for joining me. And uh, what an honor. And I really highly suggest some of you give it a shot. It's just good for us in many ways. All right. Uh, blessings um, and have a great, great 4th of July. I hope your 4th of July was wonderful and a great week. Bye.